employing Filipinos, is it a good idea? Um, I've been reading some of the comments on one of my old uh, videos relating to, uh, it's like, uh, don't call Filipino stupid. Um, and you've got some expats that say about how bad it is to employ Filipinos, but the Middle East has literally thousands of Filipinos. Um, I know when I was in Dubai, um, I think I think we only employ nine thousand construction workers from Asia, in some you know in some form. Um, but there's also a lot of the administration which are purely Filipinos. There are a lot of Filipinos there. Um, you find that a lot of the hotel staff throughout the Middle East are Filipino. You find a lot of the um, engineering staff in, in the oil areas um, are Filipino. The reality is, these guys that think Filipinos are stupid, um, I think it's more about who they've been employing. Um, because my own viewpoint on this is, it all depends who you're working with and what skills they've got. It's a bit like in the UK employing people that are 18 to 23. Um, they are not as reliable as somebody in their 30s. They have a lot of bad habits. They like to go out drinking. They turn up late. They, they don't see work as the important goal of the day. Um, meeting up with their girlfriend or boyfriend is the important bit. And I think that's the bit they missed is the fact is it's normal. You know, the the high turnover of young staff is very normal in factories or whatever, anywhere on the planet, because their mindset is off somewhere else. The job is not important. I remember listening to some guys at an Indian call center because they're like, well, I've got a degree. And it's like, you're working in a call center. You haven't got a, another job. You're at the call center, get your first year of experience so that then you can apply for another job in something you want to do. And that's the reality of a lot of this stuff is people are not interested in the same business as you. Um, they do it as a stepping stone. They do it because it's the only job available to them. They do it because they were told to go and work there. And that's why you get a lot of negativity out of people. But at the same time, I would say it's all about how you handle them. I found that the guys I work that work for me, 90% of them are fantastic because I removed the stuff I knew would be awkward. Don't turn up for work, don't get paid. Don't pay hourly rate, pay commission. You know, you, you, you put a basic, very basic rate on and then the rest is on commission. You structure it around the fact of avoiding all the issues that become a problem. Because they know if they don't turn up, they don't get paid. They 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 weren't then will work for you. They they are working for themselves at the end of the day. Um, it worked really well. The same as if you hit your sales target, you could go home. I didn't bother with well, you've got to be here for eight hours. You're being paid for eight hours. And I don't even like that myself. I mean, I worked in environments where. People could do a 40-hour week and do less than I would do in eight uh, because they're in an environment where they're not happy with it. They have no desire to improve anything because they know the work's going to still keep coming in. Um, and it's often cultural, especially in government organizations. They're, they're getting paid either way, so they're not in a rush to do anything. Um, myself... I couldn't see the point of working that way, which is why I enjoy going in for contracts where it was a complete pig's ear. They bring me in to actually bring everything back up to speed, get all the backlog done, bring the budgets back online, etc. And I go in there, do six weeks, two months, fix the problem, and then I would leave as soon as they offered me a permanent job because I wasn't interested in sitting in the office for like seven and a half hours a day. I don't want to do that. You know, I like coming in, doing a lot of hours, getting all the work done, and then leaving. Just take the money and go. And that's 
the focus for me. You know, that's what I want out of a business. I'm not in it for sitting around just because they pay pay for 37 and a half or 40 hours a week that I should just sit there for that amount. Um, I'm more in line with get the work done and get out. And, you know, unless it's something you love. You know, if I was working in photography, for example, I'd probably be doing 100 hour weeks and quite happy to get paid for 30. I, you know, it's that sort of thing. You've got to either enjoy it or do it for monetary value. Now, I think that's the bit people don't seem to get. They assume, my, well, I'm giving these Filipinos a job. They should be happy because I'm giving them a job, blah, blah, blah. Why? I don't know if they don't understand the culture. You know, that's not how Filipinos work. That's, you know, most of the Filipinos I've met, money is not even in their mindset. They complain they haven't got enough. But at the same time, it's like talking to somebody I know who's a shopaholic and telling them that they need to stop spending so much on the clothes every month because they're struggling to pay their mortgage and then telling me, but I do like buying my clothes. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter how much money they've got. They're still, they're not really that concerned about changing things to make things better a lot of the time. Their focus is often on going out on Friday, having nothing for Monday. That is normal. That's normal in the West. I've worked with enough people that would spend their entire wages on a Friday and Saturday night and come in on a Monday asking if they can borrow some money off me because they haven't got enough money for their bus fare. Um, it's not just the Philippines. And I think this is where people go wrong. They, they just mark it down as if it's one place. But the reality is it's not one place. It's the age group. The age group does it everywhere. Um, it's just part of maturing I suppose so yeah I can't really say that it's an issue it's been an issue for me because I just adapted the business around the way the people are um, because trying to do it the other way just seemed pointless you'd have to have twice as many staff and on some contracts I've worked on in the Middle East there is actually three times as many staff as you would normally need for certain types of worker due to their mentality it's already built into the contracts i mean large corporations build this into the fact that they will not get the same efficiency levels um, as other races etc because of the way people are culturally the way they are with their mindset and the way they just are and they, you know you ain't gonna change it you know it's always been like that it would take an entire country to change because the culture is ingrained in them. Your little bubble of trying to make them do a 12 hour day or whatever, um, because they're so desperate for the work, it wouldn't happen. I've never met a Filipino that was ever that desperate for work. Um, they've you know, got kids or whatever, but at the end of the day, you put them under pressure, they just quit anyway. And I suppose that's probably a good thing. What's the, what's the point of being in a job you hate as well? Let me know what you think.